Good morning. We're here this morning with our very special uh, guest, uh, President and CEO of Synchrony Energetics and Natural Health. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself, Catherine. Well, I was born in Wilmington, North Carolina and graduated from high school there, so I'm a beach baby. Oh, good. Lived all over North and South Carolina growing up and went to college at Peace College in Raleigh. Nice. Um, got my undergrad from there and then went on to get my uh, master's degree at Barry University in Miami um, to become a physician assistant. And while I was training for that, I was also training in natural and alternative medicine. Good. Um, so that was, that's where I wound up professionally to start my journey. Um, I am a resident of Wilson for a long time. Moved in April of 2000, which is almost hard to believe now. Oh, wow. 2001, rather. Um, I have three kids, all teenagers, so I don't get bored at my house. Well, <laughs> you probably can't be frightened if you're raising teenagers. Your, your, the standard is probably well. The different. standard is high. Yes, yeah. I can be, but not by things that frighten most of us most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we talk about natural medicine. Uh, you know, I, I realize that, that, frankly, that natural medicine does not always get a lot of respect. And I, I, my, my cynicism says because Big Pharma controls the uh, traditional medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's my opinion. I don't know. I, uh, I've just seen it from a distance. And I know that when you go to traditional medical school, the strong, strong emphasis is, is on called pharmacology. Sure. Where you have to learn all what all these drugs do and so forth. And, and the medical biochemistry is all about all that and so forth and so on. But it seems to me that when God created our bodies, he created a, a wonderful uh, ecological system, so to speak. Yes. Talk about it the lack of respect issue, just briefly, I don't want you to belabor that point, but have you experienced any of that? Well, I have. It's interesting though, being someone who's been trained in natural medicine and in uh, Western medicine, my path has been a little different than sure. a lot of natural medicine providers because I do uh, bridge that gap and, and bridging that is a lot of what I do. Sure. Um, Same with, you know, it's really, the same kind of conflict, at least potentially, that that you feel, but sometimes between the medical con community and chiropractors. Absolutely. As if chiropractors aren't medical people. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. I, I put down a chiropractor as my primary care person one time in an insurance company. Right. Yanked it right back out. Because yeah. in our system in the U.S., we don't, our insurance does not cover our chiropractic care, or natural medicine care. Uh, it does in some places, other right. countries, but it doesn't here. And well, it actually does in North Carolina quite well, a bit. You know, after you cut past the copays, and you know, by the, by the time it really practically doesn't seem to cover it because the copays can be ridiculous. But it does. It does cover. That was absolutely a miss. Yeah. A miss statement there. Um, it doesn't cover it as primary care medicine. Correct. That is would be more clearly stated. Yeah. And so I have experienced that conflict. Uh, you know, I'm very interested in the history of medical systems uh, around the world and throughout time. And I think if there was one medical system that had everything covered and could do it all, we'd all be doing the same thing. But there are reasons why we need all different kinds of medicine and sure. it can work together and does work together very well uh, but things that are not widely accepted in current culture or primarily accepted tend to be looked at very suspiciously and I understand because there are well and you know I've, I've made the statement one time somebody took issue with me because I really depend on chiropractors mm -hmm. Um, I've had a very severe back injury in college and neck injury and, and as a, I had a wreck, had the back seat of my car hit me in the neck and my neck oh. was numb for six or eight weeks wow. and I didn't know about chiropractors back then and mm -hmm. I still have chronic problems with it. Um, but I was missing a day of work or two or three days of work every month and a half with wow. my back. And I have not missed a day of work in 40 years now with wow. my back. And I've had some back pain, don't get me wrong. Of course, the AMA says the best solution for, for minor back pain is chiropractic. 
but we don't hear that a lot either. We don't. But when we talk about natural medicine, um, you know, and, and, and I'm, I don't know nearly what Roger knows about this, and he should be doing this interview, but sometimes people think of bat wing and they think of you know, crazy stuff. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Um, but it seems to me like traditional medicine, which has a great place in our culture, I don't deny that at all, is always looking at symptom fixing mm -hmm. as, oppo as opposed to fixing or curing the problem. Yep. And I'm guessing that natural medicine, from, from what I've heard, is about getting your body to do what it's designed to do. Is that an overstatement? Not at all. Not an understatement. We were created to be well. We were created, like you said, as this beautiful... Well, when God said good, He meant good. He right? meant good. All the time. All of it. And, yeah. and we were created to have all of us work, all of our self working together um, for our good, for creation, for interplay and community. Right. And so we are made to be well. And, and in natural medicine, one of the things that we focus on the most is kind of getting out of our own way. We well, get down to the root cause. One of the things that I was totally shocked uh, it, to, to see and experience myself, okay, mm -hmm. was I had a guy who was very big into a certain vitamin mm -hmm. deal, and he w he did a demonstration. I couldn't believe it. I, I had my arm held out, and he tried <laughs> to push it down, uh -huh. and I could resist it. Yes. I I put a put a teaspoon of sugar under my tongue, and immediately he could push and you my went arm weak. Out that quick. Yes. Is that something you've seen? Absolutely. That is uh, called applied kinesiology. Yeah. And it is a wonderful tool. Now, was that just a trick? He, he Absolutely did? not. Absolutely not. That is a manifestation. It's called muscle testing. And it is a manifestation of the way that your, your neurology and your entire body responds to stimulus. It's reproducible. It is. I, I, I didn't believe it when it happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I demonstrated it on. 20 or 30 people after that yep. and they didn't believe it either and all of a sudden they get wow as a matter of fact I often teach my clients how to do that for themselves there's a very simple way that you can do that by balancing the weight of your body as long as your body's polarity is basically correct which 99% of people's is um, balancing the weight of your body on your toes and you can actually hold a substance up to your own chest and it will pull you forward or push you back. Oh, wow. If it pulls you forward, that's good for you. If it pushes you backwards and you feel it, people are amazed. Oh, they yeah. feel it immediately. Now, what, what are some um, of those things that you can do that with? You can do that with anything. I have people who, I, I tend to allow people to learn with kind of blind testing, maybe holding different supplements that they, that I would know they would or would not need. Um, often I do it with uh, um, paper lunch bags uh -huh. with equal weights of sugar and salt and sand. Oh wow. So that it's a totally blind test. You know, I don't know which one they have either. You make them all look alike and allow people to feel the difference and then look and see what they've got because sugar is going to... And the sand doesn't affect them. No, so that's much. a neutral one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can do that with anything. I had a patient one time who had been seriously adversely ex uh, affected by a parasite while traveling in a foreign country and was dealing with some legitimate anxiety about eating fruits and vegetables once he came back. And he told me one time in a, an appointment that he literally had been going through the grocery store holding the produce <laughs> to make sure that his body was going to be okay with it oh, before he that? bought it because, it, you know, his issue at that point, his body was well. He was just getting over the anxiety because it was a, a bad experience in oh, a yeah, place where he didn't speak the language. But uh, you can do that with anything. And I encourage people to try that because it helps you to connect with your body and to understand that we are intrinsically created with ways to determine what is good for us and what is not and learning to listen is something that we don't always focus on. Well I, I trained as a therapist one time. I spent mm -hmm. two or three years uh, learning how to do therapy with folks and I didn't practice it as a clergy person because I thought there was always a, the danger of a dual relationship with church members yes. and so forth so I avoided that a lot even though it affected me greatly. But you know, listening to the signals of your body will help people grow emotionally. 
You know, for instance, 100%. if you, you know, a lot of back problems are had by people who try to put their anger and their frustrations behind them. Yes. And that's, you know, uh, I've learned in my body that mm -hmm. when I, when I, when my jaw tightens up or my neck tightens up, if I don't feel that, then in a day or so, my middle back will start bothering me. And if I don't feel that, my lower back will start bothering me. If I don't feel that and acknowledge the problem, I actually start having chest pain. Mm -hmm. And yes. then, then I deal with the issue and all that goes away. Yes. That is another thing that we talk about a lot. You know, natural medicine is absolutely not limited to nutraceuticals and supplements, sure. herbs and homeopathics. It is learning to listen to your body and realizing that, just as you said, there are places where emotions come to rest. Oh, yeah. You know, emotions rest in our tissues. If we don't process, they stay. And there are certain organ systems where, you know, anger will build up in the liver, fear oh, yeah. will build up Get in the kidneys, uh, and grief how many times, will build up in the lungs. Yeah, how many times have, have people you know, had that, that experience where their gut just tightens up and they, they start hurting and they don't know why. They go take a drug or t go take some, you know, yes. some uh, Rolaids or something. But, you know, back, I go to an allergist actually in Durham who's much into this and mm -hmm. uh, he taught me to listen to my body. If I eat a food that I'm not that not good for me, mm -hmm. I, my my sinuses will drip just like that. Just or, like that. Or I will swallow. Yep. Find myself swallowing. Matter yep. of fact, he was tr trying to use some cottonseed oil to uh, swab my sinus mm -hmm. for because they were dry and cracked, and he noticed me swallowing. He said, "I guess I can't use this on you." And I went, "What? What are you talking about?" He said, "Didn't you know you swallowed?" I said, "I did not." He said, "Start watching." Mm -hmm. And that changed a lot. Of course, I, I sometimes ignore that. I don't ignore the sugar thing anymore. I, I've been <laughs> off sugar as much as you can get off sugar for the last uh, 11 months. And I'm not, I have no plan to get back on it because I'm addicted to it. When I, when I start eating sugar, buddy, I'm telling you what, it's like cocaine. Well, it, it is. Cow. It is. It's a very strong pull. And, and we talk a lot in my practice about the gut brain axis and the special set of neurons that goes to your from your gut to your brain uh, and you know the our vernacular allows for a gut feeling oh yeah a gut, we, you know we don't it's even in our speech but we don't acknowledge well, we, the we, physicality we people, of it we tell people move on put that behind you yeah and right you have a back and, how, and what seven out of ten people have back issues yeah, in yeah. their life um, that can even be tracked radiographically uh, and we want to listen to those things and so especially if the microbiome or the community of uh, good guy bacteria that live in our gut that we can't live without. Right. You know, there are two or three pounds of these guys that live inside our gut at all times. They help us with all kinds of things from digestion to nutrient absorption. But when we get bad bugs on board, we have all kinds of imbalances that happen. And we eat sugar, we feed the guys we don't want to be feeding, and we become sugar monsters just like we, yep. you know. Well, I, I, had, I went to the same doctor in, in Durham, and I, I knew I had a sinus infection. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I said to his PA, I said, would you get him to write a prescription for me? And she said, why would you want to kill all the good stuff in your body to get rid of a sinus infection? I thought, huh. Pardon me, I'm about to cough. <laughs> That's exactly. And so I got a nasal rinse, mm -hmm. and I used a uh, nasal rinse. I put a few drops of grapes, fruit, seed extract in there, mm -hmm. and rinsed my sinuses. And guess what? Next day, I woke up without a sinus. You were infection. pretty clear. Yep. <coughs> so anyway, it's just. And now let's talk about a little bit about food supplements. Okay. Because that's what I think of when I think of of homeopathic. I realize that's not, that's an oversimplification, but mm -hmm. talk about, when you go to, when I go to a drugstore mm -hmm. and I walk down an aisle and I see um, a vitamin, you know, 995 for 500 mm -hmm. vitamin tablets. And then I go into a more keenly aware uh, drugstore where the pharmacist is very trained in natural stuff. Mm -hmm. And I see the same size bottle. Right. And it's thirty nine ninety five. Right. How can that why is why is that particular vitamin better than what you get on the shelf for nine ninety five? Well is, uh, that a, is that a question you get often asked? Absolutely. And it's a great question and always buyer beware because marketing is 
definitely part of the deal. But there is a real good reason to be going to a pharmacy where you have a pharmacist that's trained in uh, supplementation as well. Uh, people ask that all the time. I have a line of supplements that I carry in my office and I recommend and use lots of lines of supplements with my patients. The line that I carry, I carry because it can't be purchased except through a licensed so practitioner. Like standard process or some of those? Um, the one I use is Physica Energetics, but it, uh -huh. is, it is in a, the same category as standard process or something like that as far as things that have to be practitioner uh, accessed. Yeah. And the reason for that is generally chemistry. Uh, if you see a vitamin, chemistry and sourcing, there are lots of difference. Take, uh, so two common examples, melatonin. A lot of people come into my practice and they have trouble sleeping and they said, I've tried melatonin, but it doesn't work for me. Right. Well, one thing that's not widely understood is that if you take a tablet of melatonin that is going to be swallowed, you're going to absorb about 35% of what the label says is contained in the tablet. Sure. If you take a uh, melt or a gummy formulation, which I'm not wild on because of sugar and additives and a lot of other things, and also you have to chew those all the way up if they're going to work. But if you take that kind of preparation, you stand to absorb about 60% of what's there. Well, that's why if there. I take melatonin, I take nature's way that dissolves under my tongue. Correct, because you're going to get about 65, 60%. If you take a melatonin that is a liposomal liquid drop, then you're going to get about 95% absorbed. Oh, wow. So it is not a matter of necessarily needing one or the other. It's a matter of understanding how to adjust your dosage so that you're absorbing what you need. Can I give you a credit card right now for some of that? <laughs> Absolutely. I'll give you a phone number. You can call my front desk and they'll get you set okay. away. Um, the, the difference is, you know, are, are, are stark. Absolutely. I, I have a sister who is a chemistry professor. Mm -hmm. She retired recently. She taught college level chemistry for most of her career. Mm -hmm. She took me to task over that. She said, well, you know, the chemistry is the chemistry. And I said, well, my understanding is, and again, I don't want to call the brand I was actually helping mm -hmm. promote back in the day. Mm -hmm. My understanding is, is that the, the process of this particular brand getting into your system is much clearer than this other vitamin C was what we're talking about. This this vitamin C that came off the shelf, mm -hmm. and she was arguing chemistry is chemistry, but absorption is a whole other thing. And that is that that is the piece of chemistry I'm talking. You know, your yeah. sister is absolutely correct. The chemistry of the molecule is the chemistry of the molecule. Right. There are forms. There are salt forms that are going to be different. Take magnesium, for example. If you need it for insomnia, anxiety, blood pressure migraines or muscle cramps, you want to take one that is a magnesium bisglycinate. That's different from a magnesium citrate, which is what you're going to take to clear yourself out before you have a colonoscopy. We do not want the same effect from one and the other, well, but yeah. when you buy a, a tablet, you have to look carefully, and most people aren't as, you know, aware to say, oh, I don't want this form, I want to buy this other form, because sure. it's for another purpose, because absorption is the key. Right. Same with vitamin D. If you don't take some vitamin K with that, assuming you don't have a blood clotting disorder, in which case you do not want to take vitamin K, but normally we need to take vitamin K with D so that we can absorb it and translate it into our most usable sure. form in our body. Uh, so that's why your vitamin D capsule that you know is 9.99 may be significantly different than your. Right. capsule or liquid that's thirty nine ninety nine. Well, you know, I, I was, back in the day, again, I, I, by the way, I don't want to promote Ward Pharmacy because, it, you know, they need to be buying an ad on the show and not getting free publicity. <laughs> but, also, they're wonderful. But they know some stuff. They are wonderful. Uh, uh, Patrick knows a Patrick lot. Patrick knows, knows a lot. Knows a lot. And, yep. Uh, but one of the things that um, I thought about when, when we're talking about absorption is I actually saw an x-ray mm -hmm. because the, the brand I was promoting. Mm -hmm. Can I mention Shackley online? Sure, sure. They were, back in the day, they were kind of the gold standard. I was but, familiar with them when I was a very small child. Yeah, <laughs> and I worked with a guy who had 600 distributors who got put out of business by the Attorney General for prescribing cures. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> he almost went to jail. We cannot use that language. But I saw, I saw a, an x-ray mm -hmm. taking, you know, 45 minutes to an hour after somebody had ingested a bunch of no-name brand food supplements, mm -hmm. uh, vitamins, and you could see all those, all that stuff in the gut. It yeah. was just sitting there, mm -hmm. 
and then they showed an x-ray of, of uh, a high quality, mm -hmm. which at, the day, at that time was Shackley. Yeah. Yeah. There are plenty of your stuff out there, I'm oh, sure. There's, there are a even, lot of good. Even better. Sure, there are a lot and of good. And the brands. same time frame with the same person, zero evidence of, of those pills of remaining in the gut. Of tablets and capsules, right, because they had dissolved yep. and absorbed. That's and that, that means they're doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, exactly. In theory. So when you talk about your location, you're located in Wilson off Nash Street. Correct. Probably from here before you get to the cemetery? Yes. On, yes. on this way? Yes. On, on the I'm on the, the right. The cemetery would be on the left. And how, how do folks contact you? I mean, I, 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 that's a dumb question. I guess they use the phone well, or email actually, or we have, yeah, we have, we have the, all three of those. Yes, yes. The front desk phone number, 252-373-4722. But we can be found online at synchronyenergetics.com. Um, I can be found at katherinewarrenhealth.com. Uh, and there are contact emails on all of those web pages for people to find us. Synchrony is, my business is located there, but it's not just me. Okay. Um, my goal when I opened Synchrony was to have a place for uh, complementary and alternative healing practitioners to form a community uh -huh. and where people could find a lot of resources in one place. Good. So in my building at 3701 Nash, we have me, which is uh, Synchrony Energetics or Catherine Warren Health. We also have uh, Willow Naturals, which is Amanda Lang, also doing EAV evaluations. She is a naturopath, an iridologist, and a master herbalist. Uh, we have a Logan Presley with Simplistic Nutrition, who does, uh, she's a registered dietitian and helps people formulate plans to uh, reframe their relationship with food and how they use food as medicine. Um, Janie Jennings Pilates is upstairs. She focuses on Pilates as rehabilitation. Uh, wow. And she is wonderful. Sounds like you have the whole enchilada there. And then we also have a marriage and family therapy practice that is growing wildly, Anchor Family Therapy, um, especially through the pandemic. And they are located with us as well. So we have a lot of different healing modalities available in one place. Uh, They're co located. Um, and I say that to say that people do have a place where they can come and find a lot of different uh, a lot of different practitioners and resources in one spot well one of the one of the things i i i, I need your advice on this one this okay. is going to be I'll, I'll give you a copay <laughs> okay i developed a heart murmur okay and it's very minor mm -hmm. very very minor mm -hmm. but it does show up mm -hmm. and the doctor said there's nothing to worry about nothing to do nothing mm -hmm. to you know I, most people have them whatever at my age mm -hmm. but also, a different doctor who's more into what you're talking about suggested mm -hmm. I need to quit taking calcium supplements because he thought that would contribute to it. And there's some evidence, mm -hmm. me medical ed evidence, that's true. Mm -hmm. But I take the I was taking the calcium to kick out the the uh, stuff that creates kidney stones, oxalate. Because mm -hmm. when you have a kidney stone, you either have too much calcium or not enough calcium, and the, the balance is off. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend that you do when you have that situation? I generally, you know, the heart is a very special kind of muscle, and we have three kinds of muscle in our body, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Right. The heart functions on a, a cellular level with a pump that has a lot to do with calcium. So uh, that's part of the reason why the doctor would have told you to be careful with that. My recommendation is to make sure you're getting a very balanced uh, electrolyte and trace mineral supplement as well that will usually balance out how your body's using the calcium and also how your kidneys are processing the calcium at the same time. So uh, uh, trace minerals mm -hmm. and, and electrolytes. electrolyte. Mm -hmm. So I need more Gatorade. No, please do not do that. <laughs> And, and I need to chew on some nails. Uh, well, some, some you know, that, okay. Th those are ways. Those are ways that you could do it. We talked about absorption and formulation, and those are ways you could do it. But I would recommend some other ways. Uh, if you want to go food, completely food related, then coconut water is a good way to balance your electrolytes, or a coconut water based uh, sports drink, something like Body Armor, oh, yeah. uh, that doesn't have any artificial flavors, sweeteners, or colors in it. Well, Those you know, are big things we really want to avoid. 
years ago when I first had kidney stones. I've had, I've been, I, I don't know if I have any now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the doctor said, no more liquid, no more sodas with color in it. No. Nope. And he said, yes. and he said, now this was his spin. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about coffee. Coffee will not hurt you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or not, but from your point of view, we'll argue that. I don't later. usually take people's coffee away. That's, that can well, turn you, people into bears, too. Yeah. So we, we like uh, to have some think, coffee. You think a mama bear is tough? <laughs> you ain't seen anything until you see me getting off coffee. A, hibern a hibernating bear with no coffee, yeah. yes. And then the, he said, don't drink any any so don't get off iced tea completely i haven't had yes. a glass of tea in 10 years good he said get off that and also get off any sodas with color in it because mm -hmm. the coloring is what gets your kidneys burned out and your and it damages your liver well it damages a lot of things oh yeah artificial colorings are not food they are grandfathered in by the fda in this country but are not allowed in a lot of places to be in food uh, because a lot of them are petroleum product byproducts. Oh, so I know. our bodies don't know what to do with them. If you and they can't get, pronounce it, you don't need it. N no. And if you, you know, I always say my nutrition advice in two sentences if it looks like it did when it came off the tree, out of the ground, or out of the critter, you should eat it. If you look at it and you can't tell where it came from, you probably shouldn't put it in your body. Well, um, we do this, but the colors is specifically, though, they, get, they stick in our joints, in our brain especially, oh, yeah. and the flavorings as well. So. The, and with sodas, another little note, the acids in sodas leach calcium from your bones and oh then they wind up in your they, kidneys as kidney they ever. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I'm very careful. I have one uh, clear soda once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, when I'm having a lot of sinus issues, drainage, sore throat, that feels good. Mm -hmm. We're sure. out of time. We've got a caller. We can't take the caller. We're All past right. our break time. But we thank you for coming in, and may God bless thank you, you richly, thank and I'll you probably so will be seeing you down the road. Well, I would love that. Thank you so as much. We, as we go to a break.